Hey, uh, good morning to all. Uh, thanks for joining. We have uh, 29 participants and uh, um, the sequence of things is uh, we'll have the uh, Mahindra University introduction, a bit of overview, followed by an introduction to two programs, mechatronics, which I'll be doing and uh, uh, nanotechnology, which uh, Professor uh, Dibakar will be doing, right? Uh, my name is Professor Baskar. Uh, and uh, I'm head uh, of mechanical engineering um, under which the mechatronics program is being offered. So a bit of uh, overview, uh, the Mahindra first started uh, uh, as Mahindra Equal Central in 2014. So it has been already eight years. Um, uh, initially it was started if, uh, with a collaboration between Equal Central uh, which is uh, an IIT equivalent in Fra France, and then j into Hyderabad uh, with four programs. Uh, in 2020, May, we became a, a private university uh, under the uh, Telangana government. Right. Um, so now we have a lot of uh, programs that have come up. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit. Uh, but for the uh, engineering program, um, we are still um, collaborating with uh, Equal Central France. Um, so the purpose of uh, Mahindra University um, to educate future citizens for and of a better world. Uh, mission is to train them as multi-skilled leaders um, and provide interdisciplinary uh, um, uh, training in uh, science and technology. Right, and then uh, give a balance of education versus uh, experience. Okay, uh, so this will be through projects, uh, and um, uh, which in in the last final year will be through also internships. Uh, this is the um, uh, plan of the entire Mahindra University. Uh, under Mahindra University, we have a School of Engineering. Uh, equal Central School of Engineering. Uh, besides that, we have the uh, uh, School of Management, uh, School of Liberal Arts, Media, School of Education, Design, and Law. Um, so this is situated at Bahadurpali, Hyderabad, and uh, it's almost like 100 plus acres of campus, uh, fully residential for undergraduate um, programs uh, uh, with boys and girls hostel and uh, central mass. Uh, there are uh, these are the programs uh, offered by Equal Central School of Engineering. There are twelve BTEC programs, uh, seven masters programs. We also have the uh, PhD programs in engineering science, natural science, humanities, and entrepreneurship. Right. Um, so today, I and my colleague Professor Dibaka will be talking about the mechatronics program and nanotechnology. Um, well, what is the uh, uh, key USP, uh, you'll see we have uh, internship and placements with uh, a host of um, uh, advanced and um, high-tech companies, including Amazon, uh, Schlumber, Microsoft, um, and also we have the core technical companies like uh, Technip, FMC, Mahindra, uh, Sion, uh, Intel, uh, Zocata, Hero, uh, and Honeywell, right? Uh, so it's diverse, uh, including both uh, the advanced ones and the core engineering groups uh, with a, you know, the average CTC being uh, 7.5 lakhs and the highest being 45. So the eligibility criteria for uh, admission uh, has to be 10 plus two or equivalent. Uh, need to qualify in mains, JE mains, or a valid SAT test score, uh, or a minimum 80% or equivalent grade in maths, physics, and chemistry in 10 plus 2. Okay. So with this, we will uh, we'll get into uh, the UG program on mechatronics. Um, so I would like to acknowledge uh, my colleagues, Professor Deep and Janardhan, who are both uh, uh, robotics professors, uh, along with Professor Sebastian and the teams which have built the 
Mudra, Robocon, and AUV. And also, we do collaborate a lot with IIT Delhi on the uh, robotic side of it. Uh, so when you look at the evolution of machines, um, uh, it started with uh, a simple um, um, function um, actuation, and then went to a bit more controls. And then uh, in future, we'll see that it is uh, there are a lot of advanced technologies that are put into it. Uh, so uh, that is on the cooking side. But if you look at camera, we started with uh, plate films to uh, roll films, film rolls to digital camera. And then uh, the phone started with uh, uh, dialing numbers to button types and then now hands-free. And then uh, these two got integrated and now we have the uh, mobile phones with a lot of functions built into it. Right? And in future, we expect that uh, this would become like uh, simple display screens and with other advanced features. So um, in short, what it essentially means, we evolved from bulky time consuming with uh, no control systems uh, to simple and compact uh, with precise controls. Um, and then in the future, we expect it to be more modular. Uh, the systems would learn and adapt. Uh, without any monitoring, right? And uh, mechatronics plays a key role uh, in this. So what does this uh, mechatronics mean, right? Uh, if you have a physical device to execute a function or activity, we need to first understand what it is doing, right? Um, here I have one of the uh, robots um, happening. Right? You need a sensor to measure the current state of what the function is being done. Uh, take that, convert the analog signal to digital, then you send the digital signals to a processor which controls and uh, then sends a signal back to the machine through an actuator on what to be uh, done next. Right? So essentially we are looking at a mechanical thing that is controlled by electrical components and it needs a software to make it work, right? Um, so what does it mean? It, you need to have, you need to sense certain signals. Then you need to transmit the signals, uh, compute it. Uh, then you need to act and to all, do all this, we need a um, energy, um, supply, right? So essentially, uh, when you are looking at mechatronics, different systems need to come together to make it work. So if you look at uh, how each of these uh, five parts of the mechatronics come together in terms of sensing, right? Earlier, it was used the human senses to sense, you know, how things are, what is the temperature? Is it making a noise? Is there any smell or taste? From that to simple systems, then we have the uh, microelectromechanical systems, uh, MEMS, and then these uh, MEMS were then embedded into the circuit itself, so it became an embedded system. Now we are looking at uh, nanotechnology to make it much more small, uh, and uh, Professor Divaka will be talking a bit about that, right? Uh, in transmit, earlier only mechanical linkages were used. Then we had electrical uh, signals to transmit. Then it became wireless. Now it is all Internet of Things. Right? Uh, computation, earlier uh, humans used to do manual. Then we had microprocessors, high speed computation. Now it's like knowledge based systems. And uh, we are evolving into connected systems where the interactions and everything are captured and then uh, executed, right? Uh, in terms of uh, control or action, uh, earlier there was none, right? Uh, then it became reactive. You would measure something and then start uh, controlling it. Uh, then it became like, I would know this would happen after five minutes. So we know how to control and then keep moving on. Right. Uh, now it would learn from multiple systems, adapt itself, and then take the action uh, autonomously. Right. 
Um, energy, yeah, energy supply has changed. Uh, earlier it was manual humans or animals. Uh, then came the shaft power. Then we had uh, heat engines uh, supplying. Now it has become electric. Uh, in future, we expect it to be uh, contactless and renewable, right? So what makes this all, uh, uh, you know, come together and make it work for the betterment of human life um, is, uh, you know, broad of machining, uh, going into micro machining, system on chips, and other things to come, right? Um, so we see these machines uh, going to be uh, able to learn and adapt, uh, internet of things coming together to connect different things, uh, industry 4.0 and uh, distributed systems. So what does, uh, uh, where are these applications, right? It could range from uh, simple appliances like a mixy or a washing machine, or it could be for business applications um, or banking, right? Uh, healthcare, uh, you will see a lot of uh, mechatronics and robotics coming together. Uh, the DAVNC is an example of uh, surgeries uh, done by machines, uh, by remote, remotely controlled by the surgeons. Uh, you'll also see exosuits and exoskeletons, uh, one for um, getting the activity back uh, or the basic functions of hand, upper limb or lower limb, or to lift uh, bigger th uh, uh, things which are now done by cranes and others, right? Uh, it can also be um, like an example which uh, the uh, robotics group did was the autonomous uh, uh, ultraviolet uh, sanitizer, right? Which can map rooms and uh, location of rooms within a building. It will go um, switch on the ultraviolet uh, uh, light uh, then uh, de-energize most of the viruses and keep moving on, right? Uh, agriculture, a lot of things is also being done uh, in terms of looking at uh, soil quality, uh, what is required when, uh, de-weeding, um, then when do you need to uh, water versus when do you do de-weeding versus when do you harvest, right? Uh, transportation, a lot of things are already started happening in terms of autonomous uh, cars, uh, planes, and drones. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, manufacturing, uh, you will see a pick up and place uh, and also 3D printing. So uh, when we come down to what does this mechatronics, uh, you know, curriculum would require? It requires three things. Uh, we need uh, to get uh, knowledge in terms of the mechanical systems like design, mechanics, materials, manufacturing, hydraulic and pneumatic systems, uh, which help in actuation. Uh, we also need uh, uh, background in electronics and controls, um, which includes courses like electronics, microelectronics, embedded systems, actuators, uh, digital signal processing and control theory. Uh, it also requires uh, computer science background, um, looking at systems, data structures, softwares, AI, ML, and cybersecurity, right? Uh, and also robotics. Uh, along with that, uh, uh, the ethics and project management will come together. Uh, so essentially, mechatronics is uh, integration of electrical, mechanical, and computer science disciplines, uh, which will be what uh, will be taught as a part of the uh, uh, curriculum. Right. So uh, what activities we have right now, we have the mechatronics lab and class projects. Uh, what you see on the top uh, left is the lab and adjacent to that is the um, some of the um, uh, things that the first year um, uh, built that is the 2021 batch uh, it includes uh, you know a biped which is on the right in the center is uh, a balancing um, sort of a robot on the left is the position control which is used uh, in manufacturing Right. 
So along with that, uh, the students have been participating in uh, competitions. So this is a, a transfer of the learned knowledge and skills and put to build things that uh, execute a given function, right? Uh, the team went for Robocon, uh, which was conducted in at IIT Delhi in July 22. They also have uh, reached the pre-final stage of the autonomous underwater vehicle. Okay. Um, we also have the um, uh, clubs. One is the robotics club, uh, where uh, the uh, kids are given for the students to build uh, uh, and demonstrate different functions, right? Uh, and then uh, we also started the drones pilot training. So, Professor um, uh, Janathan will talk a bit about that. Good morning, everyone. You can see uh, current day drones are having many applications. People are using that in agriculture and people are using in like high rise building maintenance. And also they are being used in many other fields like uh, in defense and all. Okay, so keeping all these things in mind, we plan in our university uh, the training program on how to build drones, how to program drones, how to fly drones. So all these things have been planned for uh, uh, mechatronics and all the students. Okay. All these things involve a lot of knowledge on like you need mechanical, you need electronics, you need computer science knowledge. It is a basically a mechatronic system. So that is the best example which you can set for mechatronics. Okay, so this has been planned. And not only that, based on this, many projects have been planned for the students uh, in research level, not only in the basic level, in the research level, so that it will become very good for them to go to their higher studies or do get, get jobs and all. So this is the basic thing we're planning. Apart from that, we are working on humanoids. Okay, how do we model the path planning? How do we develop the humanoid robots? Mm -hmm. And how can we establish communication for the humanoid robots? All these things are we are being working on it. And that will be very helpful for the students who are working in mechatronics. Thanks, Janathan. So I now have uh, Professor Deep. So we also have uh, research going on uh, on exosuit. Yes, Deep. Oh, hi, everyone. It's uh, Professor Deep said. And uh, so most of the things are regarding mechatronics, uh, Professor Bhaskar and Dr. Janardhan already told you. So we are currently working on these uh, exosuits, which you can see on the right side. Uh, it is a funded project from government of India and in which uh, we have to build an exosuit or you can say a robotic uh, wearable device uh, with which uh, we can help stroke patients to move their hand or legs, or they can walk, or they can do some daily tasks, for example, eating or drinking a glass of water, uh, even if they don't have uh, much activity in their lips. So we are building uh, these uh, exosuits. I have uh, Srijan with me. Uh, I can show you that uh, he's wearing this device. It's similar to the, uh, this one, which you are seeing on the screen. Uh, this device is, uh, uh, right now on dummy, but Srijan is wearing it. Uh, you can see on the video screen that uh, it's without actuation. It is for uh, testing purpose till now because we have recently started this project, but uh, we have good development in it. So we can move all the wrists. Uh, we can do pronation, supination. You can move your hands uh, and uh, also your elbow plus shoulder. Right. So all these actuation you can do with a wearable robotic device, which you can see on uh, uh, our PhD student. So a lot of research is going on in this, this field. Uh, apart from that, on the right side, you can also see bipeds in which uh, Professor Janardhan is also working with some of its uh, uh, research group. So that's all uh, what we are doing uh, before uh, I leave. I would just like to add one more point, not only mechanical, electrical or electronics or computer science. Let's say if you're going into the field of medical in which you have to apply some uh, mechatronic system, you will also have to learn something related to that. Similarly, let's say you are making some robot for nuclear uh, uh, environment. So you have to learn something about that also. Let's say you are making drones for uh, uh, 
uh, high tension transmission line inspection you also have to learn about uh, radiation electromagnetic uh, uh, range or area in which your robot will work so there are a lot many things which will work and it's uh, actually making you an engineers which know things from a lot many other fields which normally uh, single students from mechanical or from computer science would not have known. thank you that's all thanks thanks professor deep uh, so that's all we have from the mechatronics side uh, once professor uh, deep uh, so i will hand over to professor divakar to talk about nanotechnology and uh, once that presentation is done, we'll take the questions. In the meantime, please uh, put your questions in the uh, Q&A box. Okay. Yeah, over to you, Devakar. Uh, Professor Dibaka, we can't uh, see and hear you. Yeah. So while uh, Professor uh, Dibakar comes on, um, Hey, Rakesh, can you answer this question? How many students have joined Mechatronics this year? Yeah, Professor, I'll respond to the admission queries uh, via chat. Okay. So any other questions, uh, please post in the Q&A, I see that. Uh, Professor, I think there's some technical glitch at Professor Dibaka's end. In the meanwhile, if there are any questions on mechatronics, uh, we can request the audience to post it in the Q&A window so that Professor Baskar can answer those. Uh, in the meanwhile, yeah. we'll try to fix up the technical stack. Okay. So there's a question on, uh, you know, how many have placed uh, for the current year outgoing batch? See, mechatronics, we started in uh, 2021. So it's like one year old. So uh, in the couple of years, we'll be able to tell that. Uh, in the meantime, a lot of students are actually going for internships, right? Uh, which shows that there is a lot of uh, demand for this. So what are the requirements to join mechatronics in MU and what is the selection criteria, right? Uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier, for all the programs, uh, the uh, JE main score or the SAT score uh, is required. And you can get in touch with uh, uh, Rakesh uh, of admissions for more details on that. Uh, how many have taken admissions for mechatronics this year? Rakesh? I think we have a sizable number uh, on that. Um, so we are, we are still uh, open for more admissions. Sorry, uh, sorry, Professor. Professor Dibaka is joining in. Uh, sorry, I missed your question. You were, you were asking something to me. Uh, how many have taken admissions? So we are looking at a batch of 30 students from Mechatronics. So there are a couple of questions and admissions. Let me answer that before Professor Divaka takes over. Uh, one is uh, the eligibility criteria, as uh, Professor Baskar had shown in the slide. But there are three routes of admission. One is through JE mains. The second one is through SAT. The third one is you need to have plus two uh, PCM score, maths physics chemistry score of 80%. So one of these things are required, not all three. 
So basis which you submit an application and basis the best of these three routes, we will offer an admission to you. And uh, uh, the batch of mechatronics is going to be around 30 students. Yeah, I think Professor Dibakar is online. I think uh, Professor Dibakar, you can you can uh, take over and then we'll come back to the Q&A at the end. Yes. Uh, hi, hi, good morning all. So myself is Dibakar Roy Choudhury. I will talk about uh, BTEC Nanotechnology Program in Mahindra University. So already Professor Hustler has given an introduction about the university and program as a whole. So let me start with directly with BTEC Nanotechnology. So uh, the one of the most important feature of uh, this program is it is in collaboration with Virginia Tech USA. It's an active collaboration between Virginia Tech and um, Mahindra University that we are offering this BTEC in nanotechnology program. So um, apart from Mahindra University faculties, Virginia Tech faculties will also deliver courses, at least one course in every semester. So starting from third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and also students have opportunity to pursue summer internship. For example, <coughs> for example, uh, during this summer break, we have a uh, around two two point five three months break. So that time, student can go to Virginia and um, use their excellent facilities interact with the faculties and can do the summer internships. Also, uh, fourth year is very much project intensive. So seventh semester, you, uh, students will have a, a three credit um, uh, project. And in the eighth semester, they will have a nine credit project in total 12 credit project. So that also one can do in the VT USA. And uh, uh, in the in the, in the certificate that you get end of the course, uh, it will be clearly written as collaboration with Virginia Tech USA. Apart from that, Virginia Tech has a uh, uh, this thing campus in uh, Chennai in Madras. So we also uh, closely related with that. So uh, if some students want, they can pursue uh, some internship there. Now this is. With this, now let us uh, let me try to introduce what is nanotechnology. So, <laughs> so the nanotechnology was actually kind of stains, although it was first coined in 1974 by uh, Taniguchi from Japan. But uh, many of you probably heard of Richard Feynman, who made a famous statement in 1959 that there's plenty of room at the bottom. What does it mean? It means that at that time, he mentioned that at the atomistic level, if one can play, if one can explore, if one can synthesize materials at the atomistic level, then there are a lot of properties, a lot of things can be done. So later on, when 1974, Taniguchi uh, coined the term nanotechnology, and 1980s and 90s, there were a lot of inventions actually on nanotechnology which saved the field of nanotechnology. And it was found that it is all about playing at the atom or molecular level. So this, this famous statement of Richard Feynman sometimes considered as very important in, in context to nanotechnology. <coughs> so what are the things? So in 1981, first time scanning tunneling microscope was, was demonstrated. And that can give a picture of individual atoms. So we know all of you uh, students who are coming out after high secondary, they know molecular level, atomic level, but can you see that? Without bare eyes, we cannot see. But that picture, capturing that picture, that, that, that image is not possible when this scanning tunnel microscope was invented and which can go up to that dimension and capture the atomic picture. <coughs> Fullerene, which is a very important chemical compound that was um, that was invented in 1985, which later got Nobel Prize. 
again uh, outcome or offshoot of nanotechnology. Later in 1993, many of you have heard of quantum dots. Even if people do not hear, they use it regularly. This quantum dot is one of the most important invention of nanotechnology in the sense that what is quantum dot? Quantum dot means that when you reduce the size of a material to, to such a small level at the, at, let's say, few atoms are only present, <coughs> then what happens that the movement of electrons in the atom are restricted from all dimensions and hence such dots, that's why it is called dot, <coughs> such quantum dots can give rise to special properties which are used in, uh, in, in many fronts now, even without knowing we are using it. For example, in biology, medicines, nanomedicines, in photovoltaics, solar cells, most of the high efficiency solar, solar cells are now uh, actually quantum dot, uh, depends, uh, uh, depends on quantum dot. Lighting, photonics, this lighting that you use uh, in smartphones uh, and many uh, light emitting diodes, all these are quantum dots. They, I, I should not say all these are, but the high efficient ones are quantum dot uh, based and which is a direct outcome of nanotechnology. So these are some breakthrough works of nanotechnology that happened in last 30, 40 years. Now let us, when we talk about nanotechnology, let us try to feel what is nanotechnology. Of course, it is so small, small, so small, so small that we cannot feel it, we cannot see it. So to give an idea about how small is nanotechnology, let me, uh, let me explain this slide. So uh, if you see, this is a human, human hair, hair who is, whose diameter is of the order of 100 micrometer, right? We can barely see a human hair, but still we can uh, probably hold it with <coughs> not very firmly, but still we can hold it because it is so small. Now, you see the diameter is of the order of 100 micrometer. If you make it 100 slices, then what happens that each slice becomes one micrometer, right? So you see that this is uh, 100 micrometer and you keep on slicing it 100 times. Then one of these slices is one micrometer, which is impossible to see. Now, if you further slice it 1,000 times, then one of that slice is one nanometer. So this is what nanometer is. And from this nanometer dimension, the nanotechnology term comes. Having said that, having defined this one nanometer dimension, it does not mean that all devices, all technologies, which we see, those are of one nanometer, but it can be 10 nanometer, 50 nanometer, 100 nanometer, or even up to 1000 nanometer. So kind of, there is no hard and fast boundary, but kind of, that is the uh, kind of range uh, uh, for the domain to, in order to define the domain of nanotechnology. Now, let us see some more examples of nano, uh, nanometer dimension. So if you see this, this is a uh, pollen, which we see uh, in gardens or uh, near trees, so which, which are around 400 micrometer here, as I said, less than 100 micrometer. These are some uh, cells which are 10 to 30 micrometer bacteria that we cannot see, two micrometer, right? Then these are some UC and PF con conversion uh, uh, nanoparticle, which is used in photonics, which is used in uh, lighting. So you see that those are five to 15 uh, nanometer. These are DNA, which are two nanometer. Then C60, some chemi chemical, chemistry, organic chemistry basis, uh, particularly, which is of the dimension of nanometer. So you see that this gives you a idea how different things, different different particles and what are their sizes, although we don't see them by with our bare eyes. So this is, for example, a neuron, which is 100 micrometer, then the red bar cell, which is around 10 micrometer, uh, like that micro mitochondria virus. We all know about virus, unfortunately, but because of this COVID thing, uh, this is a terminology which is everywhere. So, which is actually 10 to 150 nanometer, and no, 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 no instrument can capture that without 
the help of uh, nanoscience and nanotechnology. And nanotechnology deals with these things. And as I said about the quantum dots, so you see that these are different quantum dots of one to five nanometer, right? So what happens in this case, as you change the size of these dots, these materials, it can it starts changing its properties and can give some 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 unusual properties that human being exploit and this whole thing comes under the domain of nanotechnology and nanoscience and uh, just as a comparison you can see which is a picture of a simple atom which is of the order of uh, 0.1 nanometer so now how do we get all these knowledges this is because of the progress in nanotechnology so this is one picture where i uh, i would like to <laughs> I would like to uh, 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 compare the man-made and natural uh, nano nano sciences or nanotechnology or nano things. So you see that again, this is a ant, right? And this is a fly ass, but this is a red bars, uh, red blood cells, which are of five six micrometer. And keep on if you. Uh, reducing the size, there are many interesting things happens. So this is one very interesting topic, which is also connected with just a uh, previous talk that Professor Vaskar Tamma gave on mechatronics. This is these are called micro uh, microelectromechanical devices, MEMS. So MEMS, names, those are coming into picture, have come into picture because you because of miniaturization, you keep on uh, reducing your size. First, 1950s, the computer was so big that one building was required to hold it. Now, <coughs> maybe 100 times powerful than that computer uh, is possible in your palm, in your mobile, in your, in your cell phone. How it happened? This has happened because of this miniaturization and exploiting of nanotechnology. So what happens that this names devices this means can uh, can 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 establish a full device with actuator sensor and everything in a chip in a very small place and therefore the whole operation <coughs> can reduce to a very small volume so similarly this is a, a typical lens this is called xrd lens x uh, x-ray lens so you are on coming after class 12, so you have done um, photonics, optics experiment with, uh, with, for example, focal plane, focal lenses, and all those lenses. But I would like to tell you those lenses do not work at X, for, X, for X-rays. Why? Because X-ray wavelengths are much, much, much smaller, um, several magnitudes smaller than optical wavelengths. So for that, you need to make special lenses. So those things can be possible using nanotechnology because dimensions are so small. <coughs> Sorry. So with this, with this, um, with these applications, now broadly I want to tell you that this slide tells you how nanotechnology covers, how nanotechnology encompasses several fields, for example, quantum physics, material science, supramolecular chemistry, molecular biology. And if you go more into uh, 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 more inside, then what you see this nanobiotechnology, nanotechnology, and for functional devices, ICT, uh, uh, nanomaterials, bulk coating, soft materials, nanotechnology for chemistry and environment. So like that, uh, you see that this is the uh, this is the structure how nanotechnology actually participates in all these uh, fields and today uh, again uh, i want to repeat that when we are going for miniaturization miniaturization power saving cost saving so nanotechnology helps us to achieve those goals now broadly what are the applications of them of nanotechnology for example medicine and the drugs I mean, undoubtedly, the way nanoparticles are created, they have transformed this uh, this this field of pharma, field of medicines, right? Then energy, renewable energy, solar cell, photovoltaic energy, so quantum dots, nanoparticles, uh, they they play a vital role 
in in energy conversion and that helps you to achieve better efficiency in uh, solar cell nano fabrics <clears throat> will be surprised that even in fashion or in uh, cloth industry there is a um, uh, there is a big contribution coming up from nano side because people are trying to make nanoparticles which can extend the life of um, the fabrics, the cloths, hmm. nano devices. So whatever gadgets, electronic gadgets we use at the uh, core of that are nano devices, nano field effect and this stuff, nano CMOS, nano MOSFET and all these things. Optical engineering. So for example, what we see that light uh, transmits from one zone to another zone, one place to another place, and how <coughs> light or signal it is it is transmitted through optical fiber. So to, so so to, to modulate the properties of the optical fibers, then people use nanoparticles, or sometimes you make this optical fiber thin, thin, thin to the nano dimension also. Defense and security. There are a lot of um applications of nano technology in defense cosmetics even uh, the sunscreen lotion which is uh, zinc oxide based zinc oxide nanoparticle based actually so what happens that in that sunscreen lotion people invented nanoparticles which can absorb the ultraviolet portion which is um, harmful for, for our for our health so there are several, you, you might see that this nanotechnology has knowingly or unknowingly, most of the cases unknowingly for the general people that it has already penetrated our life. Now, based on these backgrounds, let me uh, tell a little bit about our program. So our program is actually, um, actually, actually divided into three parts. Uh, I would say one can specialize into three. One is nanophotonics part, another is nanomedicine part, another is nanoelectronics part. So what is nanophotonics part? So in nanophotonics part, nanoparticle or nanodimension materials interacts with light or photons and give rise to um, new effects, new devices, which can be used for the benefit of the mankind. So it directly deals with for example, spectroscopy and testing, solar cell, microscopy, how can you go, go and uh, detect smaller, smaller and smaller particles, then plasmonics, metamaterials, even fiber optics uh, communication. So the people, the students who are willing to specialize in this dimension can, uh, will have an opportunity, will have basket of electives that they can take and uh, can gain more knowledge and can become a specialist. Uh, in nanoparticles. Similarly, nanomedicine is another another um, uh, uh, another site that one can uh, expertise or uh, we, we offer uh, specializations in that. So needless to say, nanoparticle size or nanomedicine medicine, which is based on nanoparticles, suitable nanoparticles, has um, applications in a pharma industry, in drug delivery, in sensing, even in actuation in human body. So then uh, nanoelectrics is another uh, another part that we want, uh, uh, we are offering to, we are offering specialization. So in that, what you can do, it, it, will, it will deal with nanoscience and nanotechnology in, in electronics. So, the miniaturization of circuits, the miniaturization of ICs, the miniaturization of electronic devices, all these are possible of nanoelectronics. But is that that simple? How we achieve them? When you reduce the size, some other uh, detrimental effects come, then how you get rid of them? So those things are uh, will be taught in this, um, in, in, in this domain. So with this, I uh, we understand that uh, you are uh, coming for BTEC course. So end of that, you want to get a job or you want to be placed in a good, uh, 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 you want to be well placed. So um, these are some companies, actually list is long, 
uh, which are currently working in India. And uh, this all happened in last five, 10 years, these companies has come up. And uh, where nanotech people with nanotechnology background can get job. However, I would say that uh, nanotechnology has a very good chances of uh, uh, doing higher, higher research. And of course, in abroad, for example, in USA or in Europe, Singapore, Australia, and one can go for uh, masters also in nano domain. So uh, our this nanotechnology course started last year in 2021. 20, uh, so we, since it is uh, has a strong flavor or strong. Um, participation from research lab. So I'd like to tell you the research labs that we have currently here in Mahindra University. We have a center of excel excellence in um, AI, <laughs> artificial intelligence, uh, supercomputer la lab, which is NVIDIA lab. Um, and um, even in, in, in nano sciences, we need to do a lot of simulation, uh, high, high, high quality simulation. So those kind of simulations, uh, computation can be possible. We have a center for innovation and entrepreneurship, also known as Mahindra e Hub. We have center for robotics that uh, uh, touched by uh, Dr. Deep said just now in my previous talk. We have wireless innovation and 5G research lab, which is um, which, which is led by one of my colleagues, Subarao. Then we have fluidics and heat transfer research lab, which is um, which is led by uh, Dr. Mani Sagarwal. Then we have Tribology and Materials Research Laboratory. We have Control Research Laboratory. We have Geo Geotechnical Research Laboratory. We have high performance computing cluster apart from that supercomputer lab. I also use for my research purpose. Smart Grid and Renewable Energy Lab, Automotive Sensing Systems Laboratory, Center for Sus Sustainable Infrastructure and Systems, which is a collaboration between Civil Engineering and Computer Science Department. We have uh, uh, Chemistry Research Lab, we have Physics Research Lab, we have Electric Vehicle Research Laboratory, and also we have a central facility, Material Characterization Lab, which consists of X ray diffraction, Ramon, all high end. Uh, the newest equipments available. So these are the laboratories overall available in the campus. Right now also uh, uh, new biotech labs are coming up. These are some state-of-the-art <coughs> instruments in, um, uh, in, in MU, which are directly connected with nanotechnology program. Those who want to do nano, uh, nanotech projects they can use these instruments or uh, or otherwise also. So, for example, the left left top corner. This is the electron beam evaporation uh, system, which is deals with nano device fabrication. So, where, where happen, what happens here that you can make nano dimensional thin films in in with using this instrument. For metal as well as dielectric. This is the sputtering uh, system, which is also um, uh, uh, present in our uh, in our university. This can grow nano dimensional film. It can grow different type of materials. It can grow uh, uh, composition of materials in order to explore different properties so that. You can heat one can heat new new devices this is the ramon spectrometer that we have here which is a high-end uh, instrument we purchased it from uh, france a few years back then we have a uh, uv visible spectrophotometer this instrument can work from ultraviolet to visible spectrometer quite a broadband <laughs> domain <clears throat> And in this domain, what happens that it can measure transmission, reflection, absorption of materials. This is an infrared spectrometer. So this spectrometer works at a lower frequency than this UV visible spectrophotometer. And operations are more or less same. So in total, we can cover a huge uh, window of frequencies or wavelengths. Right-hand side, uh, this is uh, the XRD unit 
from Rigaku that we have currently in place. This is a state of the art instrument which helps to characterize materials. Basically, it helps to find the interlayer atomic distances. So, with this, uh, let me give you a, a brief idea of the course. Undoubtedly, this is the interdisciplinary course. Although I belong from physics and currently I'm taking care of that, but it has role and, it, and, and the course has contributions from physics, chemistry, electronics, bio, from all, uh, from several dimensions. So what happens in this course that uh, first year, that is first two semesters are many general or common semester, just like any engineering um, branches. So they are student attend courses with uh, uh, with other uh, departments also, other uh, courses also, computer science, AEEE, mechanical, all. And then after that, the next five semester or six semesters are more focused on nanotechnology. So there we will have different courses. First, we will have some basic nanotechnology courses. And after that, we will give the option for the student to expertise in a domain that they prefer. So as I said, we have picked up three domains based on, uh, based on the current world scenario. Those are nanoelectronics, nanophotonics, and nanomedicine. So then uh, we'll have several electives again in basket form, and there you can uh, choose the electives that 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 one wants, uh, which which will help them to go in that particular direction if you wish to. It's not necessarily semester eight will be predominantly project. I have already mentioned. And it can be in an industry or a industry research project or industry MU project. Uh, also, one can do that project in Virginia Tech, USA for six months or depending on the time they want. This can help you or the student to establish, uh, establish a relationship or establish a connection with Virginia Tech, USA that can help them for the further master's or PhD studies also. So as I said, this is possible. And also we, our collaboration with DT USA in this course is very much an active collaboration, which means that every semester one faculty will come starting from third semester and they will teach a course. So partly they will teach from there and partly they will teach here uh, in, uh, after coming to Mahindra University campus. And one course will be fully taken care of them. And one of our faculty will be will uh, faculty or someone will will be uh, will do the bridging and as i mentioned earlier also vt india which is currently has one campus in chennai there are possibility of getting internship they are very much willing to take students with nano background for internship now uh, we can speak about courses we can speak about buildings we can speak about uh, books and everything. But the well, important thing is the faculty who are going to deliver the knowledge. So uh, I must say that we have a really expert, a very uh, highly uh, efficient, well accomplished group of faculties who are dealing with the nanotechnology program. So left corner is Professor N. V. Venkataraman. Uh, Professor Venkataraman did his PhD from ISC Bangalore and then he was in ETH Zurich for 10 years as a postdoc and scientist. Uh, and he is also head of the chemistry department and uh, uh, also uh, he is also leading this uh, program with me. Then we have Professor uh, Dr. Chitra Gunnani. Chitra uh, did his PhD from Rajasthan and then he was in Southampton for some time, then he was in NUS and he was, uh, she was a, uh, this thing, um, Newton fellow. Then we have Dr. Uh, Gomti. Dr. Gomti did his, P uh, did her PhD from CNR Rao. So those who doesn't know, Professor CNR Rao is Bharat, Bharat Ratna and uh, he's known as, as Mr. Nano of India. So Dr. Gomti is direct student of uh, CNR Rao who did PhD from JNCS uh, Bangalore, and then she spent work in Canada also, uh, British Columbia. 
and uh, now she is a faculty here. Then we have Dr. Sampa uh, Raghunathan. Dr. Sampa did her PhD from uh, University of Stuttgart. Then she worked in Munich, worked in Basel, and now she is currently a faculty here who is also involved in and our nanotechnology program. Then we have Dr. Sonu Kumar. Dr. Sonu Kumar did his PhD from ISR Kolkata, and then uh, he was abroad with some uh, with postdoctoral assignment as a Humboldt Fellow in uh, Germany. And after that, directly came here to join as a faculty. Doctor, then we have Dr. Joyce, who deals with nanophotonics part. Dr. Joyce did her PhD from uh, University of Hyderabad. And then he worked in Europe for some time as a postdoc, and then uh, she came back to India uh, here in our Mahinda University as a faculty. Then we have Dr. Mukta Jabora, who did his PhD from IIT Bombay. Then he was in several institutes abroad uh, in France, then uh, in Japan, and then he came back here as a, uh, as a, as a faculty. We have Dr. Anil Anandi, who is a hardcore nanomaterial guy, nanotechnology guy, nanoparticle person. He did his PhD from NUS Singapore. Then he was uh, a postdoc in Penn State in USA. Then uh, he worked in Singapore again for some time. And after that, he joined us as a faculty. We have Dr. Kamna Pande, uh, who, who, who deals with uh, nanophotonics. She was a PhD from uh, IIT Delhi. Then uh, she worked in uh, UK also for some time, and now currently she is uh, faculty with us. We have uh, Dr. Ken Dipti, who did her PhD with um, from University of Hyderabad. Then he worked in Chicago uh, for some time, Fermi Lab, and then she worked in uh, Ahmedabad PRL also and she is currently uh, faculty here now uh, in uh, uh, now she got an international award sire with the help of that she is now working in indiana for six months and she will again come back and join us then we have vandana guptu vandana guptu did her phd from tfr mumbai bombay and she also works in uh, quantum optics, which is a uh, part of nanophotonics. And then she worked in uh, France and Okinawa State, uh, Institute of Science and Te uh, Technology, Japan for some time. And then she came back uh, to India and joined us as a faculty. And this is myself, who is uh, so far leading this program. So with this introduction, uh, of the faculties and the program and some salient features as much as I can think of, uh, I, I complete it. I'm uh, free to take your questions. Uh, without question doesn't make sense. Uh, so uh, please feel free to ask if you have any questions. Uh, audience, we request you to type in your questions <laughs> in the Q&A window. Uh, please also let us know whom you're addressing the question to, please. So, okay, I'll go first. There is an anonymous attendee. What are the future prospects for mechatronics? Yeah, uh, the mechatronics is a pretty broad area. So you could go into robotics or dynamics, right? Uh, you can get into research or uh, get into any of the automation and robotics company. Okay, or uh, you can do your own startup. That is also possible. Yeah. So the other one, uh, Manish Sitlani, how do you see mechatronics as a suitable branch for girl candidates? Okay, very interesting question. I keep getting this. <laughs> see, the, the key thing is like, there is no, uh, you know, limitation or boundary for who can do what, right? Uh, it's all in the mindset. So we have seen a lot of people getting into mechanical. We have uh, at least 10% of our mechanical branch uh, students are girl students. Uh, we are seeing a lot of interest in that, right? So it all depends upon is it suitable or not? It's about why not? That's it. Why can't you do it? You just go take it and do. There is nothing to stop from anybody. Right? Um, 
so uh, there is no um, girl student uh, specialization and there is no boy student it like uh, you know um, specialization uh, when is admission start for 2022 i think um, rakesh will answer that yeah, so uh, audience, for your questions on admissions, uh, uh, the admission process is already underway for all the BTEC programs. Uh, we request you to submit your application online and all the eligible students would be you know, considered for admission. You will get an admission offer from us if you're meeting one of the eligible criteria, which we had uh, earlier listed out. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I think, Professor, I think there are no further questions. I think, uh, yeah, I think this one is just Do you have aeronautical engineering? Uh, no, uh, we don't have that specialization, but, but we do have some of the specialized, uh, the courses of that offered as uh, electives. Um, in uh, mechanical department. Yeah, Divakar, your question. By when we can choose a specialization in nanoelectronics? We are from second year. You can, uh, you 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 can, uh, you can think of. Nanoelectronic specialization. So, second year we will have some general nano courses that is required for whether you go for nanoelectronics or nanomedicine and nanophotonics. And then slowly, the, but precisely the electives will start from third year and then that you can take. How is mechatronics and nanotechnology interrelated? <laughs> Bhaskar, you are saying something? No, no, no. I was waiting for you. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for you. Okay, okay. Uh, so I will add a few points and after that, Professor Divakar will talk about it. Uh, so when you look at mechatronics, you have the mechanical, then you have the electronics part. In electronics and for sensors, you get to the uh, very uh, small devices where uh, the miniaturization of the devices would require nanotechnology, right? So nanotechnology is an enabler for mechatronics. Achha, this is a, another question. How much of pure sciences would be taught until the specialization? The pure sciences are same for all the, all the 11 courses that Professor Bhaskar showed in his uh, beginning slide. So that is, you have in the first year, the pure courses in uh, physics, chemistry, and little more mathematics, because we believe mathematics is very important. And it is true also that uh, which, which you need for your analytical building up of your mind to handle the problems more efficiently. So that is common. So it, is, it has nothing to do with the specialization of nanophotonics, nanoelectronics, or nanomedicine. It is good for you, whichever, even if you're going in civil, uh, the amount of uh, pure senses course you do, you do the same for mechatronics or nanotechnology. Any preference or special discounts for mind employees? Thanks. This rapids can take. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we, I mean, there's no special uh, uh, fee waivers as such, but we do have scholarships to students on the base of merit. So uh, the scholarship criteria is put up on our website. We request the participants to look into that. So basically, we, we offer scholarships to about 10% of the batch based on the JE and SAT scores. And the fee uh, scholarship is about 1 lakh. Uh, there is a question from T. Ketan Kaushik. Uh, sir, what startups can we have from mechatronics and nanotechnology? Yeah, it, uh, see, uh, the requirement changes. So you have to look for current needs and future needs as well, right? You don't want to start something which has a shelf life for three to six months or an year, 
right? Your technology has to be long term. So you need to look at what are the requirements, right? Uh, identify what, what is the need which people will have for the next 15, 20 years, right? Like you rightly mentioned, daily life applications like uh, uh, floor cleaner, right? Uh, there is a robot which goes, uh, uh, you know, vacuums the floor and all. Uh, that, yeah, that is a one evolving area, right? And you will have robots for uh, industry applications to move parts from one place to the other. A lot of... Um, uh, activity and uh, you know a demand going in that direction drone delivery. right uh, drone drone delivery is the other one you want to uh, learn about uh, drones how to operate uh, how to how drones can talk to each other right and uh, use that as a mechanism for uh, drone uh, delivery medicines are delivered are being delivered people are working on that right uh, your parcels delivery so that is one area. So these are a few, right? So it all depends upon what is your interest area and uh, you have to match your interest, your competency with the um, product or technology that has a long um, uh, duration of demand, right? If you say, okay, this particular technology or requirement will be there for the next 20, 30 years, then you know work in that area and then have your startup right so your skill set your passion and then the need these three will dictate uh, you know which uh, startup you want to have so there is a question what is the scope for a startup with nanotech, nanotech. And there is a, a your question also. Can you help me and as they can maybe elaborate? So both questions from nanotechnology perspective. Let me uh, let me answer. Oh, uh, uh, let me share the screen. Huh? Yeah. So now you see. See, I. I shared one small screen, this one, applications of nanotechnology. It has application in medicines and drugs. It has applications in energy, nanofabrics, nano devices, optical defense, cosmetics. So for example, very simple thing. If you can make a zinc oxide nanoparticle and which can absorb ultraviolet ray, and that is used in cosmetics. So that's a, a startup basically. So then naturally the question comes, uh, it's such a simple thing. So many, so many people are using, uh, fabricating or synthesizing zinc oxide nanoparticle, or what, how it will be new. But you see that even many people are uh, synthesizing zinc oxide nanoparticle, but we, there, is, there is not much industry in India which can make those cosmetics. Number one and number two things, there is always improvement, how much UV it can absorb. So for example, from the science part, from the nanotechnology part, of course, startup has uh, several things. One is the science part, the development part, and then your marketing and all those things. So for that, we have a um, uh, incubation hub that they help, but I'm talking about the science part. Now, how can you improve the efficiency here efficiency means how much uv your zinc oxide nanoparticle can absorb only zinc oxide not enough then you try to dope to it with a suitable material so with your nanotechnology background this uh, the the background of the science the background of the technology you can dope it in such a way that may it can absorb more bandwidth at the uv region and hence it will be more particle and that can help you to file a patent and if someone interested can go for startup. Now, next is let's say one, two example, let me give you defense and security. So in defense, what happens that you all know about Rafael aircraft, which is pretty uh, famous and uh, known to all. And one thing is there that is stellar air aircraft, right? You don't want your enemy to detect you while uh, while entering 
uh, in the in enemy zone and while bombarding how how can you avoid that so again they are also and technology can play a role so for example uh, if one can uh, not one can people are doing that already synthesize some special structure some special materials that will coat the aeroplane uh, aeroplane body and which can help you uh, which can help you to fool the uh, enemy radar what is radar radar is finally that it sends a signal which is reflected and detected but if if our material can absorb that energy that that wave that the signal that sent then they cannot detect it right so now nanotechnology can as i said you that when we are changing the dimension where we are playing with the dimension playing with the materials at the nano level <coughs> it can give you properties which can help in getting those kind of things and that can have a direct uh, relation a direct connection with defense and then if one can do that then one can file a patent and uh, let's say can go for it uh this thing uh, for a starter so similarly uh, uh, nano fabrics i have told you in energy photovoltaic cells there is always uh, there is a continuous improvement a continuous demand of of photovoltaic efficiency so solar cell efficiency so for example uh, you see that whatever we say still the cost of petrol is much cheaper than energy that is generated by solar roof so how can you reduce the cost of energy generated by solar uh, roof at the level of petrol right or fossil fuel so the only thing is we need to enhance the efficiency or we need to find materials which is much cheaper much expensive if we want to use silicon silicon based solar cells are still uh, popular it will cost more so this is a hardcore nanotech nanotechnology uh, zone nanotechnology domain where you can synthesize you can invent new materials with a better efficiency of solar light to electrical energy con conversion and then if one is successful even if not successful one can think of establishing a uh, startup for industry in india in this dimension and so in medicine and drugs so there are ample ample opportunities in nanotechnology so it is uh, the timing with nanotechnology is like this 1974 nanotech nanotechnology was coined 1980s and 1990s all major in inventions happened and lot of research is done and now nanotechnology is in a phase where it is going towards industry as well as there are research still possible <laughs> so uh, because of this this timeline i can tell that uh, oh, there are ample opportunities for uh, uh, based on nanotech let me know if uh, any other question what is the strength of the uh, yeah so there was one question about uh, can we do masters so 30 to 40% of our student uh, aspire to advance and then uh, acquire more skills so they uh, definitely have uh, admissions from top universities from us and euro um, so yeah 30 to 40% of the students typically go for masters and mahindra university the curriculum and uh, the teaching everything is recognized worldwide so there's no problem in applying and securing good admissions and uh, if you work on a research area with one of the faculties most of the uh, all the faculties are uh, phd's from iits or have uh, postdoc experience from abroad so their letter of recommendation carries a lot of weight with this uh, admissions Is French language taught during the course? Yes, French language is there during the course. You have it every semester, but uh, 
that's uh, uh, that's optional, I think, right? No, uh, the first two years uh, uh, there are four semesters and uh, four levels of French, which is mandatory and carries uh, credits. Uh, the uh, third and fourth year, if you want to get um, higher advanced level certification in French, uh, there is option to register for those courses in third and fourth year and finish those certification courses. So four years there is French, first two years uh, uh, credits are a part of the curriculum. Uh, process, I think we have addressed all the questions. Uh, now we can wrap up the session with the closing remarks, please. Okay. So there's, uh, I think Rudresh has questions. So Rakesh, go ahead and answer. And uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, joining for this session. And, um, you know, we are happy to share uh, the uh, uh, curriculum and what we are doing at Mahindra University. Um, hoping to see you all at the campus in the future.